Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to review the RSL Speedwoofer 10S subwoofer. Um, I originally emailed RSL about a, a review sample something like, I want to say eight months ago now, and it took all this time to get one here because they actually kept selling out. So it's got to be popular enough and people seem to really like it. Um, and after having it in my home for a while, I'm, I understand why, and I'm going to tell you about it. Um, so I'll go ahead and leave some specs on the screen so you can kind of check that out for yourself. Um, you guys know I don't like to get into specs a whole lot, but let's talk about some standout specs or features real quick. Then we'll t I'll tell you about what it sounds like, and then we'll do some comparisons. So some standout specs. First and foremost, this is a ported design, and it is compact for being a ported design. Now, it's sitting on a Rhythmic F FVX12, which is a ported 12 and a good size one. It's about equal in size to a PB2000, I would say. And the depth of the RSL Speedwoofer 10S is actually less than the width of the Rhythmic FVX12. Um, the, it's essentially a 16 inch cube, if you will. Uh, weighs about 40 pounds. And most impressively is gonna be its power output of 350 watts. Now, some of you guys might be like, ah, 350 watts ain't a whole lot. And you know, if we were talking about subwoofers that cost $1,000 or more, you'd, you'd be right. But this is a $400 subwoofer. Emotiva's SE12, which is a good subwoofer, is 200 watts RMS, and that's impressive for the $400 category. When I reviewed that subwoofer, I was like, 200 watts RMS, pretty good. And it is. Most subwoofers around the $400 price point, even $449, you're getting like 150 watts RMS maybe, or you know 100 watts. If it's 200, it's peak. So the fact that this thing has 350 watts RMS, uh, a decent cabinet, an amazingly beefy 10 inch driver. And I'm gonna leave a picture on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. We've got a huge magnet structure and motor section, a two inch voice coil, which is again, very impressive for this price point. Around this price point, you're generally gonna see a 1.5 inch voice coil. So having a two inch voice coil, very good. It's gonna give the driver a better like voice coil to cone ratio, help it be more in control and things like that. And additionally, we have a cast basket, which is, the superior option compared to a stamped basket. A cast basket is gonna be a whole hell of a lot more rigid. You definitely don't want the you know, structure to flex as the subwoofer is you know, going back and forth. That would just be bad and lead to a fairly sloppy and terrible sound. So good job on the driver. You know, Good job on giving us a beefy amplifier with built-in wireless. And good job giving us a decent cabinet all in a compact enclosure. But let's be honest, all that stuff really doesn't matter if it doesn't sound great and it doesn't deliver. So let's get into what it sounds like. So let's start with the mid bass first. Um, this subwoofer is gonna have what I would consider a little bit of a mid bass boost. Its frequencies in that range are gonna be just a little bit more prominent than you would normally hear in other subwoofers. And I don't think that's actually a bad thing because it does it in a very clean way. Um, Cheaper subwoofers often do have boosted mid bass, but it's not clean. It's boosted to give you the illusion of loudness, but that's not what we have going on here. The boosted mid bass of this, coupled with the strong low end extension and authority, actually creates this awesome com combination where this subwoofer can extend fairly low, have good control, authority, and output at the lower frequencies that you're gonna want in a theater experience, but still provide very tactile bass because of its little bit of mid bass bump that it has. And it's gonna do it in a clean way, so it's still gonna integrate all at the same time. It's a really cool combination of things because most of the time, um, not always of course, you know, but most of the time, if a subwoofer extends really, really low and has like thunderous, you know, deep bass output, a lot of times it's just not gonna have the best mid bass performance. It's not gonna be very tactile whatsoever. In fact, it's very common for home theater enthusiasts to have large subwoofers up front uh, for the super deep bass and low frequency extension, and then two smaller subwoofers in the rear of the room for that more tactile bass. Because, you know, one subwoofer generally can't do both. Here, we have a subwoofer that can do both. Now, don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying it's gonna extend and have the output and authority of an SVS PB16 Ultra, nor am I saying it's gonna have the mid bass articulation of a Rhythmic F12. What I am saying though, it's got a great combination of low frequency extension and deep bass, as well as tactile bass in the upper frequencies. Tactile bass is gonna be important for anyone who listens to a lot of rock, 
you play games like first person shooters, the initial crack of the gunshot, when you feel it and it hits hard, that's tactile base. Um, and it matters a lot in movies as well. Movies do have a lot of like gunfire and things like that. Personally, I don't care so much about tactile base if I'm being completely honest, but I've heard the phrase used enough that I know it's important to a lot of people. So I definitely wanted to mention that it's great at, again, both the low frequencies and the tactile mid bass. Let's move down to the bass overall. So it, it extends plenty low, especially for its size, which is, I mean, essentially the size we've got here is what you would generally find with your average sealed 12 inch subwoofer. Its dimensions are not far off from the SVS SB2000 Pro or RELS HT1205 or Rhythmix L12. The difference here is though, where those are 12 inch drivers, this is a 10 in a ported enclosure. So the overall speed is actually more in line with a sealed driver. The uh, articulation and bass note distinction, pretty good as well. And the output is quite surprising. Being a ported sub, it is gonna have a good amount of authority down low. Now, like I said with the, or maybe I didn't say it, I don't know, but look, I'm just gonna say it. With a ported subwoofer, with most subwoofers, honestly, you wanna remember, with great power comes great responsibility. If you turn the gain up too high on the back of the amplifier, it's gonna sound like shit. It's gonna sound sloppy and messy and overdone and exaggerated. That's your fault if it sounds like that. It should not sound like that. If you adjust phase correctly, frequency correctly, and gain correctly, this should integrate into your room better than any $400 subwoofer has the right to. So essentially what I'm saying here is this is really, really good at 400 bucks. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it can compete with something twice its price because that's just not the case. That's not something I really believe is true for the most part. Let's use a car analogy real quick. I was just at a Toyota dealership recently and I noticed the new Corolla, they had one for $17,000. Pretty good value for a car, 17 grand, brand new car. Now, I don't think anyone in the world would expect the $17,000 Toyota Corolla to compete with a car that was double its price, say $34,000. Hell, nobody would expect the Corolla to even compete with a car that was $5,000 more than it cost, right? You know, or 20% more than it cost. You just wouldn't expect that. I don't know why in audio, it seems like so many people are looking for like this product that is like 90% as good as something double its price. It's ridiculous, it's crazy. Get that out of your head, guys. What you should be looking for is fair exchange for your money. That's good value. If a company is selling something that is, you know, 90% as good as something double its price, it means that company is, has priced their product poorly and they don't know how to sell their product. It's highly unlikely you're gonna run into that kind of experience. Instead, what matters is when you buy something, an audio product, for example, is it worth its asking price? And for its asking price, is there a better option? So let's answer those questions. Is this worth, worth its asking price of $400 delivered to your door? Yeah, yeah it is. Can you do better for $400? No, no you can't. And let's move on to the comparisons where we can talk about that. So, first and foremost, let's talk about this versus Emotiva's SE12. Now, Emotiva is definitely known for bringing bang for your buck to the table. So this is gonna be a great comparison. With the Emotiva, we have a 12 inch driver and a 12 inch passive radiator, 200 watt RMS, and it does have a little bit of a unique feature where it's got built-in bass management. This is gonna give you almost double the power with 150 watts more. That's quite a lot more power. Um, it is pretty rare for a company to outshine Emotiva in terms of value and dollar for wattage and dollar for output. Emotiva's kind of got a lid on that. They're pretty good at that, but this is gonna win in terms of that. Um, there's just kind of no way to mince words there. And guys, I love Emotiva. I'm a huge Emotiva fan. Um, the, one of the first sound systems I built when I got back into audio was based around Emotiva. There's a big place in my heart for them, but I'm just speaking the truth here. The RSL Speedwoofer is gonna be able to play tremendously louder than the Emotiva SE12. It's gonna have a lot more low frequency extension, authority, and output at those lower frequencies. There isn't really any area where the SE12 is better than the RSL Speedwoofer 10S, except for the fact that it has built-in bass management. And if you wanna know more about that, you can look that up on your own. This is not a review 
of the Emotiva uh, SE12. So uh, let's move on. Let's talk about this versus the Aperion Bravis 8D. That's another $400 subwoofer. By the way, if I didn't say it, the SE12 by Emotiva is 400 bucks, just like this. So the Aperion Bravis 8D, that is a compact eight inch subwoofer. It's got 300 watts RMS and two passive radiators that are also eight inches in diameter. The Bravis 8D is beautiful. It is one of the best looking subwoofers. If wife acceptance factor matters for you, or you need something compact that is just gonna look like a piece of Scandinavian furniture, look no further, the Aperion Brava series has got you covered. But if that's not so important to you, and we're just gonna talk about performance here, while $300, I'm sorry, while 300 watts is very, very respectable power for the Bravis 8D to have, this has still just a little bit more with having 350 watts. And having a 10 inch driver, it is gonna extend lower, play louder, have more authority down low in those lower frequencies. And this is actually gonna have a little bit more mid bass articulation and note distinction than the Aperion Bravis 8D. Okay, um, those are the only two like subwoofer comparisons I have that were $400. So we're gonna go up in price now and we're gonna compare it to things that are more expensive. Um, unfortunately, I've not spent a whole lot of time with the SVS SB1000 Pro yet. So I can't really do that comparison. So we're gonna have to jump up 80 bucks and compare this to the Rhythmic L12. The Rhythmic L12 is $589 now, I believe. So it's almost 200 bucks more expensive. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when we're talking about an item that's $400, that's about a 48% increase in price going up to 589. So that is substantial. Again, if we look back to the Toyota Corolla analogy, we wouldn't expect it to compete with something that costs 49% more. So we can't expect that here. The Rhythmic L12 at $589 would outperform the uh, RSL Speedwoofer 10S, even though the Rhythmic is a sealed 12 inch design. It has 300 watts RMS, crazy amount of extension. Servo technology, it's mid bass articulation is gonna be quite a bit better, far more accurate from top to bottom and far more controlled and having better integration. And if we move up from here, we're gonna continue to see subwoofers that are better because Mainly, they cost more money and are generally speaking going to be larger. So, let me think if there's any fun comparisons just for shits and giggles here. Looking around the room, looking around the room. Should we compare it to the Kef KC62 just for fun? Let's do it. Okay, the Kef KC62 is almost four times the price, it's $1,500. This is $400. We could buy four of these for just $100 more than what a single Kef KC62 cost. The Kef KC62 is fairly small, however, and it has uh, dual opposed drivers, six and a half inch uh, in size that are made of magnesium. The cabinet is made of extrude aluminum and has 1000 watts RMS. This is quite the unfair comparison. I'm sure you would all agree. And as you would expect, the Kef KC62 is gonna be able to extend lower, have better bass note distinction, it's gonna blend better with the system. You're gonna have more of an experience where the bass is coming from the background versus from the subwoofer directly itself. And it's overall going to be better in just kind of every category. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up there with the comparisons, honestly, cause like nothing else make, like it just doesn't make sense to keep going. I mean, I could compare it to the, the Rhythmic FAX12 it's sitting on top of, but Let's not, because what I want to get into is this. My sound system sits at around, you know, $12,000 to $13,000, depending on how I have it configured. And I'm fairly confident RSL did not build this subwoofer to be at home in a $10,000 plus dollar sound system. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you it was at home 100% in my $12,000 to $13,000 sound system, but what I can tell you, it wasn't wildly out of place. And that's kind of what surprised me the most. When I set it up and blended the phase frequency and gain, first and foremost, I was impressed by its low frequency extension authority and control. I was impressed that it sounded more like a sealed subwoofer than a ported subwoofer. It's tight, it's musical, it's good. I'd say this is really good for mixed systems, really good. And as I was playing it, like a lot of times I ask myself the question, like if this was mine, if I was forced to listen to this thing, 
like for a long time, how would I feel? Because I'm a, I'm a little bit spoiled, you know what I mean? Most of my gear is pretty expensive now. So I ask myself like if I was forced to live with this like cheaper product instead of my more expensive product, you know, would it bother me? And it's like, the answer is always like, yeah, it would bother me. Like I'm, I'm not gonna bullshit you guys, right? But it's like, how much? Not a lot, it wouldn't bother me a lot. The RSL Speedwoofer Tennis is pretty good. I mean, it, I don't know how else to like say this. It's 400 bucks. It's got 350 watts. It's got tons of output. It's got a great cabinet. It's got a great driver. It's got a beefy amplifier. You can't get more for your money. You just can't. That's just really what it comes down to. And yeah, look guys, I'm gonna shut the fuck up from here because I really don't have anything else to say. If you have any questions, ask about them in the comments below, but I do have one request. Don't ask me how it compares to something more expensive because I think I've already made that clear. What this subwoofer is, is the most subwoofer you can get for 400 bucks and it is fantastic. Later.